YouTube. This is the first tutorial in a series of tutorials that I will that I will be making that will teach you how to use Microsoft Visual Basic 2010 Express. Now, the best thing about Microsoft Visual Basic 10 2010 Express is that it's one of the most used uh, development programs for Windows out there, and it's free. So let's get started. Now, by this time, I'm already assuming that you've gone into Visual Basic and played around with it a little bit to get familiar with the controls. If not, then come back to this tutorial. Now, in a lot of tutorials on YouTube, they teach you how to make specific programs. In these tutorials, I will try to teach you uh, how to, not how to make specific programs, but I will give you the tools to make your own programs. So, to start off, we'll go to File, New Project. Make sure you select Windows Forms Application, and we'll set the name to Variables. And if you haven't guessed it already, in this tutorial, we will be going over variables. So, let's wait for this to load. This is the beta version, so it's a little slow. And you should get this right here. You'll see Form 1 right here. And I apologize, I am a little sick, so my nose is stopped up. So, to start off, we'll just add a button to our form. You can make it a little bit bigger, do whatever you want to it. But for the text, we'll type in my variable. And now, in a lot of tutorials, they do not change the name of the button. Now, this makes it really hard to keep up with what the buttons do when you make bigger programs. So it's good to always name the button to something you'll know. So we'll just name it button my variable. And now, now that you have that done, we'll start writing the code. So to get to the code, just double click on the button, and this opens up. Now, all programs are made up of at least one class. Classes are just things that are called upon when the program starts and the code inside of it is run. And um, all programs have at least one public class, which um, in this class, in this um, program right here, this is the main, and um, it's the first one that's run. And then you see right here, these two lines, this is what's called a method. Now a method is a segment of code that you write the code inside, and then if you want to place that code anywhere else in the program, you just call upon that method, and it'll do it for you, so you don't have to write the code over again. So this method right here is private. Uh, sub. We'll go over all this later and what this means. You don't really need to know what it is right now. But all it really does is handle the event uh, button click. So when your button is clicked, this is the code that's going to happen. So we're going to start off by declaring a variable. Now to declare a variable, you're just going to type dim. That just says, hey, I'm going to declare a variable. So we'll just name this variable my variable and then as and we'll start off with integer so we started off by declaring saying that we're going to declare a variable we named the variable and then we said what it was going to be by using as and it's going to be an integer now there's a bunch of different variable types so I'll only go over a couple I'm going to go over four in this tutorial and we'll use more in later tutorials there's integer which is any number on the number line, negative or positive, that does not have a decimal. And then there is double, which is pretty much just a decimal number that um, can hold decimal points to a really long range. And you can use it for anything except for pi, because pi never ends, and the double will only hold so many decimal points. Then there's a single. A single is pretty much the same thing as a d as a double, but it does not hold as many decimal values. So this would be useful if you're making a big program and you want to save space in the memory for um, other things that you need. And then the last thing that we're going to be covering in this tutorial is a string. A string is basically a line of characters. So whether it be letters, numbers letters and numbers or anything 
And then, so that's the four types of variables that we're covering in this tutorial. So to explain what the variables are, when you when you create the program and you declare a variable, declaring the variable pretty much sets aside uh, sets aside memory in your RAM to hold that variable. Now there's efficient and non-efficient ways of doing this, but for now those don't really matter because our programs are going to be small and they won't take up very much memory at all. So we'll go over that in the future. So we'll just go back, declaring my variable as an integer. We'll set the value of my variable to 64. Now, we declare the variable and we set its value. Now, here's something that we're going to be using a lot in these tutorials. We're going to type in message box dot show then two parentheses. Now inside the parentheses I'm going to type in my variable. So my var which is our variable. So pretty much what's, what this is going to do is display 64 on the screen which is my variable. And to set the title to set the title of the message box you just type in comma space and then inside parentheses We'll just type in my variable is. So now you've seen this. Let's run the program. So you can see up pops your program. And now if you click on my variable, a message box pops up. It says my variable is 64. Okay. Now we'll try that with something else. We'll try that with a string. So now when you make a string, you have to put it inside of parentheses or you'll get an error message. So we'll just type hello world, which is commonly used for first programs if you had if you uh didn't know that. So we'll just run this again. And here you see the form and you click on my variable. My variable is hello world. So that's pretty much an introduction to variables. So go ahead, watch this tutorial as many times as you need to, get some practice with these, and um, go on to the next tutorial once you have that down. And just one more thing if you guys are wondering doubles and singles, we'll just make a double variable real quick. You can set this to I don't know, 64.5, and that's pretty much it, and then you can add more, it's stored as a double, I skipped over that because it's not really that hard to figure out by yourself, so that's the end of this tutorial, I hope you enjoyed it, please subscribe.